Library.tv is an excellent way to share content, but it is fundamentally different than the way something like YouTube or Vimeo works. Whenever I upload a video, such as this one, showing off some cool 3D printed computer parts, the first person to watch it is downloading a copy of the video from me. The next person to watch the video is able to get that data from both of us. The more viewers, the more upload bandwidth becomes available. But as watchers turn off their PCs or clear out their save directories, the available bandwidth will decrease. I personally haven't experienced any bandwidth issues, but the point of building this server is that there will always be a little bit extra bandwidth than there would otherwise be for my content, plus any other videos I think are cool enough to get that extra download speed. So today, we're going to build a peer-to-peer -peer network server here on 3D PC. Besides library content, there's also a lot of torrents in this machine as well. We've got different flavors of Linux, we've got OBS, and LibreOffice, a bunch of other apps like that that are freely available for torrents, and we also have some academic data sets for machine learning. This bad boy, he can fit so many torrents. Hardware-wise, this machine started out with an AMD A4 3300 CPU, you know, the one from 2011. Two cores at 2.5 GHz might not sound like a lot, and it isn't. Much like a modified Honda Civic that I'm sure goes around your neighborhood at 2 in the morning, can't just be mine, there's a lot of sound and a lot of effort, but not a whole lot of movement. As a headless server, the CPU chugged along just fine, but if you tried to play YouTube 720p and move the mouse cursor at the same time, <laughs> you could forget about that. So we've got about $40 worth of hardware, which is pretty decent, but then we went and tripled the value by throwing in a 1000 watt gold power supply. Perfectly balanced, as all computers should be. Later on, I did spend $10 on eBay to get a quad core running at 2.9 gigahertz, which was a much needed kick in the pants to this machine. We've gone from raw potato all the way up to Mr. Bean levels of performance here. It's not great, but it's a step in the right direction. I gutted out all of the small, noisy little fans and swapped in two much quieter 120mm fans. I printed out this pink adapter plate to replace the one I ripped out with a crowbar. I did consider keeping the original motherboard with its dual Xeons, but I just didn't have enough spare DDR2 that matched laying around. Imagine that. Plus, there's the aforementioned fan noise issue that comes from all those little fans. Now, you might think, since I want an always-on server that's about peer-to-peer -peer networking and all that good stuff, I might not go with a paid operating system like Windows 10, right? Well, that would be crazy. I love Windows 10. I love Windows 10. 3dpc.xyz. I mean, Windows 10 has great features like if you want to run a Minecraft server, you can look forward to it going offline every day or two because of forced update. We're going with Linux for this one. Because there's Linux versions of the library app and I can use my favorite torrent clients. But seeing as Microsoft just ended support for Windows 7, I think it'd be a great nostalgia idea to put Windows 7 on here and leave it on my network 24-7 unsupervised. That seems like a great idea. Now, don't worry. It is going to be Linux. I can already hear the angry comments being typed furiously on RGB mechanical keyboards. But honestly, given the hardware choices from the beginning of the video, I don't know why you would have expected any better. But to be clear, it's free NAS with a Peppermint OS guest operating system. If you've watched this channel with any degree of regularity, then you know that I love 3D printing PC parts. I had just done a Craigslist buy, and the seller threw in several free cases from old pre-built systems that ranged from classic to only a design that a mother board could love. I liked the design of the library logo, and thanks to Inland's green PETG, I was able to kind of give it more of an emeraldy look. I love the transparency of it so that you can see the infill pattern, which is triangle and cura. 
In the top left corner, I added an at 3D PC and copied the library logo font as best I could. The top was painted during a couple free hours that the clothing designer Redbone Pirate had while he was in town. The other side panel is blank, but for the front, I pulled out the USB 2 card reader and all three optical drives to make room for an actually decent air intake. While the library logo in the front grille looks cool, it's not really going to actually filter any dust. The fan is one out of a triple pack for $10 off Amazon. Good fans. For the price. I still haven't thought out a plan for the other side of the case, but since that's the side that's going to be up against the wall, I'm not really in any hurry to make a final decision. But if you have a suggestion for that other side of the case, leave it in the comments below. Even though the hardware specs are nothing to write home about by any stretch of the imagination, it does do its job, and it's nice on my network monitoring software to see a little spike in usage every time someone watches one of my videos. Plus, if we look at the torrenting side, we can actually see that some torrents have uploaded many times what I downloaded. I've actually contributed bandwidth. So if you want to do some good for the library community, for less than a hundred bucks, you can put together your own server, or you know, you could just not close the app or delete your downloads. Just don't go crazy with the power supply like we did here. That's an example of what not to do. What are some library channels that I should be hosting on this server? What are some torrents, legal ones, that I should be hosting on this server? Let me know down below. Which 3D printed case mods would you like to see next? Which one of my t-shirts do you not have? Am I asking too many questions? I don't know. Where's Waldo? Will I see you in the next one? What's your credit card number? Are you subscribed so that you will see me in the next one? Leave the answers to all of these questions down below, and I'll see you in the next one.